Good morning. I actually wrote the blurb and everything last night. Made a couple minor modifications this morning. But it is election day here in America and that's going to be the theme. Although it's not going to be as political as you might expect from me saying that. Our votes are tallied out of this world is the title that I selected. It doesn't matter who counts the votes on Earth. The true accounting is measured in unseen realms. Election Day is about choice. Some say the universe is stupid, that God does not record a negative vote. If we don't want something, we get more of what we don't want. In other words, a vote against injustice, fraud, and war brings on more of those very things to be experienced. Many buy into this interpretation. To me, I, or I do not, to me, a vote for peace is almost the same as a vote against war. Our higher self is not stupid as we have been told by those that do not want us paying attention to what is going on in the high places of human governance and control. As always, it is a great deception. The truth is, our votes are tallied out of this world in the Akashic records, and no one escapes responsibility for the choices made. God, who knows our hearts, is not mocked. What we sow, we reap. This is the time of accounting, the age when all secrets are being revealed openly. <sighs> After I finished my very long day yesterday, as far as getting the uh, weekend events page up and my notification to the Metagroup subscribers sent out, I took a little bit of a break. It was in the evening already. As I said, it was a very long day with lots of telephone calls, and many of them were uh, calls for voting, you know, calls from the Republicans or the Democrats trying to get me to vote on their side, which I'm not going to vote at all. But anyway, it was a very long day, and I needed a break away from the computer, so I went into meditation, and that's when the idea for today's video came to me. And as I said, this morning after my meditation, I came and I made a couple of minor tweaks. But uh, pretty much it's what I put it down last night. Because this is a serious issue that we have in our understanding, especially what I pointed out here, that people say that if you focus on what you don't want, you get more of what you don't want. I, everybody in New Thought, everybody in the New Age religions has heard that expression. I listened to and actually posted on the uh, Weekend Events page of my website an interview or, or a interchange, exchange between a, a man in a red cap and Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham, called The Biggest Missing Piece. And I put that on there uh, for the weekend events page, again, on my website. But that triggered a lot of thought because, again, Esther Hicks talks about the same thing that I've heard over and over and over again in my New Thought, New Age community, my metaphysical community, that we can't focus on what we don't want because we get more of it. What you focus on expands. And that has been an enormous, an enormous pet peeve of mine for a long time. God sees the heart. And it's true that if from our ego, recognizes itself as disconnected or sees itself as disconnected. If it's if if that choice that's made is just to not be exposed, 
if the choice is to not have to pay the consequences of our choices and our actions, well, then I totally agree. What you focus on, you'll get more of because the lesson hasn't been learned. And I want you to hear that. There are lessons in the polarized world where we have polarized the du dual points of life, the opposites, which were made to dance. And when they're not dancing, when they're opposing each other, we haven't learned the lesson. And that's, that's what's coming to me in my meditations. Once we have learned the lessons and we do what Jesus did, we take the sins of the world on ourself. And you say, Ron, that's blasphemy. No, it's not. It was what Jesus showed us how to do. He, or at least in the mythology of what we've been taught about what Jesus did, he took the sins of the world upon himself. That's what the Christ spirit does. And, and what does that mean? Does that mean that the world doesn't have to learn its own, learn its lessons anymore because somebody else learned it for them? <laughs> I don't believe that's what it's trying to say. It's saying that we're all connected in the collective unconscious. And when we recognize that we are interconnected with the collective unconscious, with all of humanity, and in fact, all of the cosmos, when we recognize this, we've learned our lesson. We're now seeing the bigger picture. We've taken on the sins of the world and we have the ability to transmute them because God looks at the heart. The intention of this prodigal son and prodigal daughter journey is to wake up and remember where we came from. And by having taken the journey, we've expanded the conscious awareness and the awareness of our own ability to create even the illusion. And I'm not saying that if you, if all you do is focus on getting your but out of trouble and not taking responsibility for what you've done, you'll keep getting more of it. They're absolutely right on that aspect. You'll keep getting more of it. But there's a danger in that. And I want you to understand the danger. Because if you don't focus on the shadow elements, if you don't acknowledge them, if you don't acknowledge the injustice in the world, if you don't acknowledge what's wrong with things, you'll never fix it. You'll always keep getting it till you learn the lesson that it is your responsibility to move from the head to the heart, that long distance trip, and from the body to the heart. Okay, from the spirit to the heart, from the flesh to the heart and you integrate the opposites. That's been my message all along, the message that Spirit's been trying to drum into my head and to my heart and to my body and to my life for a very long time. Embrace the paradox. Don't fight it. Embrace it. It's about love. It's about taking on the sins of the world, or put another way, it's about telling the truth. It's about being in integrity to who you are and recognizing that you are not just one or the other, but that you are both, that both aspects are in you. The aspect that is the prodigal son and the aspect that is the self-righteous son that stayed home. <laughs> and you are both of those. And when those two aspects of yourself are capable of loving each other, which is the merging of the higher and lower aspects of what it is to be human. When you merge those, you have cast a vote. And those votes are tallied not in the matrix, but out of this world. Now, in this world, on election day in the United States, we have choices. It's not so important which choice we are making as it is why we are making that choice. I make the choice not to vote 
for Obama or Romney. I make that choice. It's a conscious choice. Why won't I vote for either one of them? Because I see both of them as totally enmeshed in the matrix and pushing an agenda that does not serve the highest good for the most people. In fact, it's not a win-win situation. The 1% get the most and the 99% get nothing. That's the way the system has been rigged. And it's a phony, crooked, corrupt, false, illusionary system. But it's a system that has been put in place to teach us the lesson. Now, I don't want that to continue because I came to help bring in to experiential reality the, the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's what I feel I've come here for. I've felt that all of my life. I've, I define it differently than I did when I was younger. I see it differently because I've integrated more pieces of me. I've come to understand things in a greater and broader perspective. But the initial goal is the same. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and right useness, righteousness that comes from love, that comes from the integration in the heart of the higher and lower aspects of what it is to be human, of what it is to experience sentient life. And when we do, when we reach that point of being able to integrate, we become more mature. Not that we've finished the, the, the course, but that we're becoming more mature. And this is what's happening on earth in 2012. People are saying, we're tired of the corruption in government. We're tired of the corruption in the financial system of the world. We're tired of the constant warfare and the constant polarization within our culture. We're tired of that. We're tired. We don't want to live like this anymore. We've seen what it does, and we don't like what it does. Now, that's a vote for good, and it's registered in the heavens. It's registered in the Akashic Records. We've reached the end of our rope. Collectively, we breathe the sigh and say, oh, please, please, no more of this. No more of this. We're tired of it. We're tired of living like this. We're tired of having the few take advantage of the many for their own, for the benefit only of the few. We're tired of living like that. We want to live from the heart, no longer from the head of pitting this against that and of playing the fundamentalist game of I'm right and you're wrong. No, we are all in the same boat, all of us. And it has nothing to do with our political affiliation or our religious belief system or our financial status in the world. It has to do with the fact that we're human. And as humans, we are linked together. And there can't be any other way that is true. We are linked. We are linked by our, the collective consciousness and the collective unconsciousness. We are linked in those things. They, are, they belong to each of us. And when we choose to integrate, when we choose to become whole, which makes us holy, okay, when we choose that, that choice is recorded. And it ultimately brings salvation with it. Because the salvation, it's not something that's done for you. It is a gift, yes. It's a gift that you're able to see it. That's grace. That you're able to see beyond the doctrines and the belief systems and the imposed messages of the matrix. You're able to see beyond that. You're able to see deeper than the surface. You're able to get into the very heart of the matter and into your own heart. And what's there but a divine child that's saying, love me. That's saying, love everyone. Love even as you are loved. Are you willing to give your inner child love? Is that how you're going to cast your vote? on election day, whether you're in the United States or in Europe or in South America or Latin America or Canada or Australia or Asia or uh, 
wherever, Africa, wherever you are. Even if you're on Ant in, in Antarctica as one of those handfuls of people that are down there. I don't know how many people live there. Probably not much more than a thousand, if that. But anyway, wherever you are, you can cast the vote. And your vote is tallied out of this world. Are you going to choose life? Are you going to choose something that is sustainable for everyone? Or are you going to continue the insane battle of just trying to get out of personal responsibility, trying to get out of accountability. The accounting is made. Whatever you choose, that is recorded. And who is the one that's going to judge? You are. Because these are lessons you, your higher self, gave you, your human self, to learn. Which is why you came here, to learn these things and to cast your vote, to make your choice. I invite you to choose life. I invite you to choose love. I invite you to choose truth. I invite you to be whole. What's your choice? Thank you for listening. Namaste.